order the select board meeting for March 29th, 2021. Uh, this is a remote meeting. Um, we're gonna start momentarily with um, the minutes. Um, but prior to that, I would just like to add to the agenda if the rest of the board is um, willing to have a very short discussion at the end about returning to live meetings. Is that okay? Consensus on that? Just yeah, a discussion, not consensus necessarily on doing it, but uh, we'll take a look at that. So we'll start with the minutes for the select board meeting of March 15th, 2021. I remove that we approve the meetings of March 15th, 2021 as submitted. Is there a second, please? Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the select board minutes for the, as presented in the packet for March 15, 2021. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the roll. Ralph? Yes. Chris? Yes. Dennis? Yes. And Bruce is a yes. I'm assuming Catherine will be joining us momentarily. Uh, we'll, we'll proceed with warrants. 38 and 39 in just a moment. We have some people here, Anna's here and Mr. Ward, Jamie Ward is here. Are those items, Eric, that would best be taken out of order to um, accommodate these individuals? And yes, they would. So what, what, what items are they here for, I guess? Well, uh, they're here for the um, item. First one under new business, which is item 21-098, consider award of a contract for the FY 2021-22 paving work. Is, um, and both are, are here for that? Yes. Okay, so uh, unless uh, the board disagrees with the chair, we'll take 21098 um, <clears throat> immediately after communications. Sounds good. Sounds great. Okay, great. Actually, let's take that before board committees, commissions, and departments as well. Is that okay? Yeah. Chair's discretion. Great. Okay. Great. Fine. Thank you. Uh, so we'll move on to warrants 38 and 39 that were reviewed by Ralph. Uh, aggregate total is 73,827.77. 23, 350, and 66 of that is payroll. Uh, the vendor amount uh, includes 8,618.37 to Andrew Scoggin Bank, which is various debt service payments. Uh, we have 7,599 to the Cobbesey Watershed District. Uh, we finally have, <laughs> and this, this may sound, you know, just a tad silly, but uh, 3,584 to custom metal roofs of Maine for the firehouse snow stops, which are now in place, which I'm sure will shed some rain in the spring. And uh, the other big ticket item in this, uh, in Warrant 35 is 9,352.83 for health insurance to Maine Municipal. Uh, and the total for uh, Warrant 38 is 50,005, 12, 11. And again, as I say, the aggregate is 73,827.72. And I would move approval of same. Second. It's, uh, 77, Ralph. It's it's 77. I'll make the correction. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, I don't have my cheaters on. That's quite all right. Um, it's been moved and seconded to approve the treasurer's warrant in the amount of and this is warrants 38 and 39, any amount of $73,827.77. Is there any discussion or questions on the warrant? Seeing none, we'll proceed with a vote. Ralph? Yes. Chris? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Dennis? Yes. And Bruce is a yes as well. Um, that's, that's what we call the gentle warrant. That's the one without the school payment in it. <laughs> 302,000 and change. Yes. Uh, we'll move to select board communications. Do any members of the board have anything they would like to share uh, with either the board, the public? Yes. Dennis, please. Hello. I have three things that I would like to talk about, if possible. 
Go ahead. Number one, I'd like to say that the nomination papers uh, for positions throughout the town of Reedfield are available now. Um, and if you are watching this or listening to this or you are any way interested in being involved in the way that your town operates, this is a great chance for you to be involved. Positions on uh, the Solid Waste Committee, positions on uh, the Select Board, positions on uh, the School uh, uh, Board uh, piece, you can find them on the town website, uh, readfieldmain.org. But if you're interested in being involved in your town uh, beyond perhaps a Facebook comment that you think is fantastically effective, uh, then I suggest uh, you go to the town office and find a way to be involved in the government of your town. Otherwise, someone else might, uh, and you might miss out. So check that out. Number two is I would like to say that if you haven't already gotten in touch with me about uh, Heritage Days, uh, we are formulating our meeting schedule. I love to do meetings. And I like to provide refreshments at my meetings, just so you know. Uh, we will be getting that out here soon. Uh, but just know that we are excited about the prospect of having uh, our uh, annual Heritage Days. And hopefully you can hear my dogs. Uh, they happen on uh, August 13, 14, and 15. Uh, hang on. Are you being invaded? <laughs> Sorry, my, we have three dogs right now, uh, and the, uh, the uh, Heritage Days is going to happen, and we hope to have a robust participation from all of the town committees and boards. The last thing I want to say is kind of a, a random piece, but I want to make sure that it gets its due, so bear with me. Um, not only uh, have high school sports been sort of altered by all of the pandemic, however, um, they have also uh, provided a lot of relief uh, and release for kids uh, in our area, especially at Morana Cook uh, Community High School. Um, I just want to uh, throw a shout out to all of the teams uh, that, that were, were in during uh, this past uh, fall season, the winter season, um, and with the spring season looking like it may be somewhat familiar, uh, then that is excellent. But I want to point out um, one uh, particular performance in, in, in particular. I just want to say a very special shout out to Coach Travis Magnuson uh, and the boys basketball team uh, at Miranda Cook Community High School. Not only this year were they undefeated uh, against other teams uh, that they played both up and out of their, um, their conference, normal conference, uh, but they also won their postseason uh, conference tournament as well. Uh, and to top it all off, uh, local student Cash McClure uh, was named the main uh, Mr. Basketball, which is quite an honor to bring home to our little town here uh, in Reedfield. So I just want to make sure that, that people understand that this is a, a special thing, uh, that no matter what we as adults have had to say about it, kids continue to endure and do a great job. And I think this is a great example of the way that when we make our commitment uh, to the schools, no matter how big that payment is, uh, we see that it pays off. So I uh, just want to share that with you and say thank you. Thank you very much, Dennis. Uh, any other board members? Uh, seeing none, we'll move on to uh, town staff reports. Eric? All right, thank you. Um, I did put in the packet uh, just recently uh, this afternoon the um, treasurer's report for uh, the, the month of February. Um, and uh, I'll just touch on a few quick highlights here before I uh, um, you know, turn it back over to you. But the um, uh, check reconciliation has been completed through February 28th, uh, and there were no unusual uh, items or activity uh, during that time period. The audit uh, is still in process. Uh, unfortunately, um, you know, we haven't been able to get even a, a full draft uh, from the auditor. So uh, this is the last year of their uh, agreement with the town. And uh, I can say that we will be looking uh, because we're just, um, we, we came so close to getting back on track. Uh, and then here we are again. Um, uh, so that's a bit of a disappointment, but we are, um, you know, able to, to move ahead and find a different auditor next year. Uh, the budget, 
the month of February was a, a quite a busy month for the uh, the budget process. We had several iterations of the budget that were reviewed. We also had our uh, capital planning meeting, uh, which was um, which was quite productive uh, and led to some very good discussion about the direction of town uh, expenditures, um, including paving, which we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, as far as comments go, uh, we should be about two thirds expended. Uh, my report, I think I said 58%, but I, that was an error. I I'd, uh, missed a month there, but we should be about two thirds expended. Uh, and for the month to date, we're actually looking quite um, quite good. Uh, on the revenue side, uh, we have um, uh, February is the big month or one of two big months for real estate payments. So that's helped out a lot. Also, we're continuing to see uh, increases year over year increases in the amount of revenue collected for motor vehicles. So uh, that area it has been incredibly strong. Um, there's some concern that it might uh, flatten off as um, as time progresses, uh, and uh, you know all the zero percent interest and uh, COVID payments go away, and people stop buying cars. But uh, once they buy a new car at a high high um, value, uh, the excise tax continues uh, to depreciate slowly over time, but it does maintain a lot of that initial initial. Um, value. So uh, in any event, um, we're seeing good trends there. Uh, as far as expenditures, we are uh, about 8% over where we normally are. Um, again, that can be quite variable depending on what we have for capital projects. Uh, this year looks a lot more like it did two years ago when we were first working on the, the big push for the fire station. And so um, while we do have some additional expenditures, most of those are capital related and most of those are offset either by borrowing or by use of designated and undesignated funds. So that's my treasurer's report for the month of February. Most things look uh, quite normal. Uh, always there's a little bit of variation on the monthly basis, but year to date looks pretty stable. Thank you, Eric. Um, when we chose that auditor, uh, the current auditor, I mean, the idea was actually they were going to be the solution to late audit present presentations. Um, and so do you know if this is due mainly to adjustments to COVID because they've had to work from home and things like that? Or um, are you um, just concerned in general? I'm concerned in general. I mean, uh, the COVID piece has an impact, but I can't tell you how many times I've called them you know, every week or every other week and gotten the answer, well, I've got to bring it to this person or, well, it's going to be, I'll get, I'll have it to you next week. And it's, it's been, you know, eight, eight weeks of that. Okay. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, I do have to... concerns beyond COVID. Great. Okay. That that's informative for, for us. Uh, does anyone else have any question for questions for Eric on the treasurer's report? Anything else, Eric? From your, from your end? Uh, I guess I'll just give a quick update on the, the hiring process for the clerk and code officer. Uh, we did do a lot of work uh, last week um, and have had a number of interviews. We do have two uh, preferred applicants at this point, uh, and uh, I'm working on final, final discussions with them, uh, some final vetting. Uh, but I expect that uh, if things hold, that we'll be putting offers out for both of those positions this week uh, with a fairly high chance of, of, of success uh, in, in retaining those, those top applicants. Um, and if not, then we, we have uh, you know, other, other applicants to go to and uh, also uh, a bit more time, I think, um, in both cases, but I'd prefer not to go there. Uh, we've been we've been stretching out the code officer for, uh, far longer than we should. Uh, but so anyway, good good progress there, uh, and uh, and I'm just quite pleased to have the budget ready uh, and and more or less wrapped up for review tonight. Great. Um, so Eric, we'll just slide right down to the awarding of the FY21 and 22 paving work. I think everybody that was going to be here for that discussion uh, or presentation is. So I'll just turn it over to you for that. 
Great. Well, thanks, Bruce. Um, so I'm going to turn this over pretty quickly to Anna, who did um, most of the work on getting this together, getting it out, meeting with the contractors. Uh, and this was the first RFP that she really managed almost entirely uh, solo. So I just want to say thanks to Anna for her work uh, in getting that together. She did a fantastic job. Uh, developed some great relationships uh, with the folks that she was working with. Uh, and we had a great result uh, because of that effort. We had, you know, 10 plus, I think, contractors give us numbers. Um, and everybody was comfortable. Uh, they had good information. There wasn't a lot of variability. There's always some outliers. But uh, in any event, Anne did a fantastic job with that. So I'll let her talk about the process a little bit and, uh, and the recommendation that we have going forward. Hi guys, thank you. Um, so there's a nifty bid tab. Did you guys get this? Yep. Okay. Um, so we had ten uh, bidders bid on the pro on the paving project. What we're having pa paved is Plains Road is going to be done with the shoulders done with three quarter inch minus, and we're also including the intersection of Rat Mill Hill Road and Gay Road. The asphalt on Rat Mill Hill Road has failed um, and we're going to take that out and repave 60 feet versus the 120 that's there and match the existing material and decided at the pre-bid meeting on gay road there is about a about two to three hundred foot it's hard telling where the actual end of the pavement is up there um, but we're going to cut out the first <laughs> we're going to cut out the first 60 feet of that it seems to be um, more potholes um, and replace that with a 12.5 uh, millimeter in the first 60 feet. Uh, we've worked with the property owners up there. They're all pretty happy about that. And we're going to be doing some um, tree shrub removal on the corner of Plains Road and Gay Road that are a site obstruction for oncoming traffic coming from the Mount Vernon side. Um, along with that, we're also paving Sturdivant Hill Road and doing the shoulders and doing the shoulders on South Road after a couple of years ago when we had it paved. Um, so again, we had 10 bidders on this. Um, you can see where I've highlighted the low bidders. Um, after discussing this with uh, the town manager, Eric, and the road committee, our recommendation is mainly paving, who also into, did get the last paving bid on South Road. So we are very satisfied with the work that was done, great communication and no issues. Um, around the paving project. So, and it'll be Jamie Ward, who is the owner of Mainly Paving, is here today as well for that meeting. So, is there um, any? Thank you, Anna. Yes. Thank you, Anna. I'd, I'd like Jamie to just go ahead and, and introduce himself to uh, the board. Um, he's joined us, he's come all the way this distance by Zoom. <laughs> so, yeah. Jamie. Uh, no, I'm Jamie Ward. I'm, I'm actually the owner of Mainly Paving Services. I also do the estimating uh, project management, um, kind of wear many hats and make sure things get done. So, um, and I look forward to doing the work for you guys. Uh, I enjoyed it last time we were here, uh, last time we did the work, and, and I look forward to this one as well. So. Thank you, Jamie. Um, are there any questions for Anna? And by way of Anna, perhaps Jamie. Or, or Eric. If not, I will take a motion on this. Catherine, please. Do we have an estimated begin and end time for this work? We have not set an exact end time, but we, um, in the RFP contract, it did say it would be done before the next fiscal year, unless a agreed upon contract between the, the town and the awarded bidder. So by June 30th? Ideally, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, just to give you an idea, my intent is to, as soon as the roads on post, to to jump right on it and try to get it try to get it finished up as soon as possible. And the reason I say that is because the liquid asphalt prices are rising, and there's no escalation in this, so I'd like to get it done uh, in a timely manner if possible. So. Yes. <laughs> That's excellent. Thank you for being willing to come to Reedfield and provide us a great. Uh, job at a very good value. No, well, I look forward to it. I would make a motion that we award the paving contract as stated by Anna to mainly paving in the amount of $337,854.30. I second it. <laughs> it moved and seconded to uh, approve uh, the, um, the bid on the paving contract 
uh, to be um, awarded to uh, mainly paving, right? Is that correct? The correct name? Okay, good. Yes. Um, is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to the vote. And just for anyone who's watching um, on uh, Zoom, we're required to go ahead and do a roll call vote, uh, which is unlike what we do in person. Ralph? Yes. Chris? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Dennis? Yes. And Bruce is also a yes. Thank you very much for uh, joining us tonight, and uh, um, we look forward to seeing the work done. Great. I appreciate the work. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Have a great we'll night. Move. Thank you. Great. We'll talk to you Thank soon, you. Jamie. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Um, we'll move on to um, boards, committees, commissions, and departments. Um, is there someone who will be reporting from the comprehensive? We're going to hear an update. Is, is that coming via you, Eric, or was somebody going to be here? I think it's going to be uh, me and Dennis. I, I had tried to uh, work with the chair and vice chair, but um, they were um, uh, unavailable uh, this evening, unfortunately. So, um, well, let's get uh, that let's get that done and um, and, and get a, a review to date or whatever you've got. Yeah, so I'll just uh, point out what I included in the uh, in the packet, which is uh, the uh, schedule that they have uh, revised and also the uh, committee assignments. Uh, and this is just to demonstrate the um, the high level of work that's going into this effort. Uh, this was put together by by the chair in consultation with uh, the vice chair, myself, and KV Cog. Uh, but this is really Henry's product. Uh, Henry put this together uh, for us to help lead this process. And I think it's an exceptional tool. Um, it was a multi-part spreadsheet um, to help move things forward. And this just shows the administrative um, uh, capacity that we have uh, with this um, committee. And I, I think that we're gonna see a very high level of work from them. Uh, this um, past month, they had their, I guess it was, it was yeah, in, in March, they had their first uh, chapter meeting to discuss and review a draft chapter. Uh, and it went very well. I think that um, uh, we're going to continue to see ownership on the part of the committee members. Uh, and that's going to translate into ownership on the part of the community uh, with the you know outreach that they are planning. Um, I feel very comfortable with this. I think that um, it's headed in the right direction. Uh, there's always hiccups here and there, but um, you know, the strong core leadership and uh, and a very well-organized approach to this. It is a little bit later than we originally hoped. We were thinking town meeting uh, in 2022, but that's just not quite practical given, you know, some of the impacts of COVID and other factors. Uh, so their new landing spot is uh, for approval in November of 2022, which uh, in all honesty might get, might get a bigger turnout um, and more vote, um, uh, voter awareness. So, I think it's a it's a good approach, and um, I'll just ask Dennis if he wants to add anything. No, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, it's been a great uh, committee so far, and it seems like there is great leadership as well. Um, I think everybody on that committee knows that this is a legacy sort of commitment. It, what you're doing leaves a lasting. Uh, impression on Reed Field, and I think everyone takes it pretty seriously. So I'm glad to be a part of it and uh, look forward to the future. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Eric. Bruce, can I, I have a question? Sure, uh, let's go ahead. Question two, but you go first, Catherine. Oh, thank you, Ralph. Um, Eric, do you know if the committee is planning on putting updates into the messenger on a monthly basis? Uh, I don't think they had planned on that. However, we could probably break up that schedule uh, and plug that in so folks know what's going on and maybe what's upcoming so they could contribute. Um, we can work on that. That's a great suggestion. It, it just, it's that um, already their vehicle for getting the word out, um, even if it's just a quarter page update mm. on, we heard about blah, 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 see the minutes posted on the website. Um, yeah. Okay. That's excellent. A good suggestion, Ralph. Um, if I if I read the packet correctly, Greg Gergen has resigned from this group. Do 
Do we need to consider an alternative appointment at this point? His absence, if that is indeed the case, is going to be is going to be a big minus, and uh, uh, for whatever reason, we're going to miss him. But uh, do we need to fill that hole? There are alternates. Okay. There, yes. are, there are alternates that are appointed. Um, I mean, we can certainly ask the chair in terms of workload um, if one of those alternates needs to become permanent or if there's um, sometimes alternates prefer to be alternates yeah, or if there's need I, to, uh, to add someone. So um, that communication will occur. Thank you. In large part, it has, it's all being taken care of. Oh, okay. Bingo. Yeah, I need to push the button. <laughs> Any other questions? Seeing none, um, thank you. Um, I want to thank the budget committee for their minutes of February 4, 2021, the broadband committee minutes for February 18th, 2021, I'm assuming, not 2010, uh, because I'm not sure how much broadband there was in 2010 <laughs> um, of, of the level we're talking about. Um, and the rec board for their minutes of March 10, 2021. Uh, I guess I'm, I want to note that these are very current minutes, so I really appreciate having uh, such currency and, and update uh, and uh, uh, in way of an update. Um, we'll move on to public communication. Are there any members of the public who would like to address the board? Seeing none, we'll move on. 21096 is to consider uh, the appointment of Kristen Parks um, as the interim town clerk and registrar of, vote, of voters. And I move that we appoint her into the interim uh, positions of town clerk and interim registrar of voters. Can I have a I second? second that. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All in, yes. Um, yes, please. Eric does this position end when you hire a new clerk and put forth the appointment for them? Yes, and so um, technically the clerk appointment is actually the town manager's responsibility. Uh, but as with all things, um, you know, the board certainly has a, a right to say no. Um, and I also put this in as a way to notify you that we were having an interim uh, and highlight the fact that we needed an interim because of the activity uh, with the budget and the upcoming town meeting. So, um, but yes, it, it, if in the uh, in the appointment itself, it says um, uh, up to June thirtieth or until sooner dismissed or something to that effect. And that's my intent: is that as soon as we have somebody on board and uh, and ready to go, that we'll be making that change. Thank you. Well, it's it's never my intent to usurp what is particularly your job. So, um, I don't think we need to take a vote on this unless you want a vote on it, Eric. The registrar uh, is the select board's prerogative. Okay. So, um, but so, it's just, yeah, go ahead. So we have that um, motion that I made on the floor, which is the appointment of interim town clerk and registrar of voters. Just, you know, in your mind, consider that first part of that, uh, just a verification of the good choice of Mr. Dyer. And uh, the other one is uh, well, the appointment that we're making. How's that sound? May I call the roll? Ralph. Yes. Chris? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Bruce is a yes. Uh, 21097, we'll consider the resignation of Greg Durgan from the Comprehensive Plan Committee. And I would echo uh, Ralph that um, that's a loss for, for us. I think he has a breadth of knowledge across the town. Um, so it's very much with regret that I will move, move that we uh, accept the resignation of Greg Durgan from the Comprehensive Planning Committee. Planning Committee. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded to consider that resignation with regrets. And a thank you to Greg for uh, everything that he has uh, contributed thus far and uh, will continue contributing uh, in the town as he uh, does. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call a roll. Ralph? Yes. Chris? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Bruce is a yes. Thank you. Um, I did call uh, Greg this morning just to thank him for his service. Um, 
We've done 21098. Oh, it's, I feel like I'm just moving uh, at a pace that's incredible tonight, but it's probably good. not, right? <laughs> uh, the next item is to consider revisions to the town manager's contract. And I'll start by giving some background uh, on this um, and why we're doing this and why in your packet you see a revised um, contract. When I say your packet, I'm talking to the public in general who might be uh, either attending watching on television or might later watch this on YouTube or just simply read the packet um, because that information is always out there. Um, Eric was successfully recruited by um, another town uh, fairly recently. Uh, the board believed that it was in the best interest to rene renegotiate a contract with him. Um, this was not done uh, in a fashion where um, you know, anything other than good faith uh, occurred. Uh, the board itself met and said, gee, we'd really like to retain Eric. Um, it turned out that uh, the town he was going to, uh, he was one of two finalists. Um, not exactly sure what the sequence was, but there was an offer eventually um, made to him. Um, and our offer was really not a counter offer. It was just really a parallel look, if you will, at his position and talking to him about our desire to retain him in good faith. And um, we undertook reviewing salaries for both our population and valuation level as a town. Um, we were definitely on the low side uh, of where we would want to be. Um, and by the way, um, we're on the low side because we believe we have a high performing um, uh, town manager as well. Don't turn red over there, but uh, that's that's how this board feels. Um, we also felt that it was important as we discussed this contract that not only um, it, you know did we want to be fair to this situation, but we also needed to realize that we were not in a competitive place if Eric did leave at some point with the kind of contract that we had. Uh, so we did renegotiate the contract. Um, you'll see in the contract, there's a number of provisions that are changed. I would inform everybody that basically the bottom line to the town is negligible in terms of uh, total costs. Um, it looks like there's a very large raise involved, and there is. But what we're doing is reallocating uh, some of his benefit um, costs to salary at his request and in, in, in negotiating or, and I'm not even gonna call it a negotiation. It was a well-meaning joint discussion, if you will. Um, and so with that, um, um, that reallocation to make sense for his situation and our salary um, requirements to be attractive, um, we felt it was important to do this. So that's. That's basically the background. Um, we did know, know during the process, uh, because we all read the news, that positions were opening in Hollowell, positions were opening in Gardner, positions were opening in Richmond. I certainly joked with uh, Eric a couple times about, well, there seems to be a lot out there. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I, I think we wanted to make sure he was committed and happy in, within the town of Rayfield. Um, does anyone have anything they would like to add to my long speech on this? Ralph. Just very briefly, I, you, you nailed it, Bruce. Uh, but I think the responsibility of any town government body that, uh, that controls budget functions is to make sure that they keep and retain and have the facilities to do so qualified and valued employees. And I would say that this does that. I don't think it's an overreach by any stretch of the imagination. And I think it will stand the town of Reedfield in good stead for the foreseeable future. Anyone else? I'd just like to add that I'm very appreciative that Eric um, was willing to stay with us. Uh, you've done a fantastic job for the town of Reedfield, leading us through some older projects and some new ones, and you've done a great job with that, um, and this is a well-deserved contract. Great. 
I would also add just thank you, Eric. Um, and I think that when you when you look at Reedfield as a town, we make an investment in our schools and in our roads, et cetera. Um, and I think this is a sort of commitment to uh, having the right people. So thank you very much. Thanks. Anybody else? I just want to say that I've been there since Eric came on and uh, it wasn't the easiest job when he first came on. So we really appreciate everything he's done for us. Yeah, I guess I'll just wrap up by saying we've made it so much easier for him though. <laughs> uh, we've had quite a few challenges over the years. I, I was really happy to be part of the group that hired Eric um, now over five years ago, I believe, or close to that, and along with Chris. And so we made a great, uh, um, a great selection at the time. And um, as echoed here, uh, this is the right thing to do, um, but it also is um, a, a key investment for our town in the long run, because uh, certainly in, in the course of a turnover of, a man, of management, um, there's some loss of time and, and so on and so forth. So um, I'm gonna move that we approve the contract as presented in uh, the uh, packet and that the town uh, select board will execute it with their signatures uh, along with Eric. And I'm sorry, Eric, um, after I get a second on this motion, I'll just ask you if you wanted to say anything. You don't need to. But second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the town manager's contract that's in the packet. Eric, did you have anything you wanted to say? You're muted. Okay, the guy can't function properly. <laughs> Wait a minute, let's take it back. <laughs> I, I just wanted to say I was muted. Yeah. Uh, no, I really I, I appreciate the um, the willingness of the of the board um, uh, to work with me on this. Um, as you know, I, I wasn't looking uh, for this necessarily. Um, uh, either the the offer in another town uh, or the the generosity from from the board uh, when it came down to uh, finding out what was right uh, to 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 maintain a relationship here and uh, I am committed and happy uh, so thank you all for that great thank you Eric uh, we'll move on with the roll unless there's any other discussion I don't think there is Ralph yes Chris yes Catherine yes Dennis yes Bruce is a yes as well thank you um, so that contract will be at the town hall and we can probably sign it with the next warrant papers or whatever we need to do. Um, the next item is to consider, speaking of investing in employees, is to consider the employer-sponsored retirement plan options and directions. Uh, you put some guidance information or actually this draft um, request within the packet, and I'll go ahead and let uh, Eric, you kick off on this and uh, and maybe bring Ralph into the discussion as well as Chris, who were the subcommittee on this. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. So um, the subcommittee had met a couple times uh, and uh, gave a, a pretty pretty good direction on where um, they had wanted to to head um, in, in discussions with staff. I mean, Teresa was an active part of this as well, um, uh, and uh, so we. Uh, ultimately decided that uh, the best approach would be to put something out uh, to um, to bid the initial bid was much more focused on looking for a plan administrator uh, and then moving into uh, the a secondary phase of of um, of bringing in someone to uh, help with financial management or financial advising uh, basically for the uh, employees and, and the group uh, individually and collectively. Uh, and so um, Ralph and I did meet with a couple of, of financial advisors that we had, uh, that had came uh, highly recommended from other, um, other towns, other managers. Uh, and so over the course of those discussions, we, we came to realize that um, we were, as they called it, looking at a three-legged stool uh, where you have the financial advisor the financial um, 
manager or the investment manager uh, and the financial, um, the investment fund. Uh, and so each of those parts is a different role, uh, but it appeared as though the best way to approach this was to really try to bring in the first two together, the financial, um, uh, the investment planner, investment um, uh, specialist, and the plan administrator. Uh, and they have different roles. Um, and I've been learning a lot about this as we go. Uh, the, um, the plan administrator is there to make sure that we have a, a good, solid background document uh, and to look out very broadly for the interests of the town and the employees. The financial advisor has a much more um, involved role in helping the employees perhaps pick uh, what kind of investments they want to make. They're the ones that show up on a quarterly basis and give presentations to the, to the employee group. Um, and they're the ones that, um, that we, the employees can go to if they have questions. Um, really, the, the plan administrator might be the person that I would go to if the town had questions about uh, something technical around a, a change in government policy or something to that effect. Um, or questions that the employees uh, that we couldn't answer for the employees. So uh, we were hoping to bring those two in really as a as a as the first pass uh, with the recommendation of a preferred financial um, uh, company uh, investment company. Uh, not that we would have to go that route, uh, but um, by bringing this in as a package, it consolidates things a little bit, but it also allows those people that are going to be working most directly with the employees and most directly with the town uh, to come in as something of a package so that we can have a, a, a plan administrator that is comfortable with and is um, hopefully working currently with uh, a financial um, and investment planner so that we can have relationships that are already existing rather than doing independent bids and kind of uh, forcing things together that might not otherwise uh, be, be a natural fit. So we're looking for people to come in and give us their best offer, their best proposal on how to provide really a full scope of services, uh, but with a focus on those first two legs, the, the financial um, advisor and the, um, the plan administrator. So uh, this is where we're headed. I think um, there's some good, this is probably the right approach for us. We did look also at main PERS uh, and found that to be a fairly unattractive option that was really at, at odds in a lot of ways with the type of control that we want the employees to have. Um, we found that main PERS was more or less a black box. Uh, you put in your money uh, and no matter how much money they made, you got a defined uh, return. Uh, so it really wasn't wasn't quite what we wanted, but we did look at it. Uh, and so um, this seems to be close, very close to where we are, uh, but with a better focus on management uh, in the, the fact that we have a planned administrator where we didn't before. Uh, but it also brings in better service uh, and these financial um, advisors uh, that have the proper certifications to, uh, to be actively managing the funds, which our current um, advisor does not. Uh, and that was a change in, in federal law uh, several months ago that we're trying to catch up with. So um, I think I've touched on most of the background for this. Um, uh, you know, we are comfortable with this RFP, at least as far as I understand it. I think Ralph's had a chance to look at it for a while. Um, and I'll just leave it. Uh, Ralph, if you have anything else or you wanna add something new? Thanks. I, I think we're in pretty good shape with this RFP. Uh, when we originally crafted the first iteration, uh, we did send it out to some prospective vendors uh, that uh, Eric had, had determined might have an interest and might be good partners. And the feedback we got was... Uh, was that we should basically expand the RFP, which we have done to include uh, solicitations from financial advisor groups. Uh, we didn't want to make it a, a complete three-legged stool because I think we would have been overwhelmed with proposals from investment companies without having the other two uh, other two legs in place so that we could properly vet them. 
So I think this is a this is a solid approach that gives us the two most important components we need to uh, to move ahead. Uh, we need an, an ERISA compliant plan. That's what your plan advisor or third party administrator is going to do. And we need a financial advisor that has a history of working with town employees, working with plan administrators, and helping us select the best investment company out there to represent the interests of the town and the employees as defined by the, uh, the document that the plan administrator will create. And to Eric's point about looking at the main plan, it's a defined benefit plan. Uh, that's not the way most small communities are going right now because of, uh, because of long-term liabilities that you just simply cannot forecast. Uh, and we would be tied to that. And it's a performance-related vehicle that has revenue issues for all the participants. And we might be tied to that down the road. And that's not the way we want to go. I think, uh, at least from my perspective, we want to be independent and manage our own plan with the proper people in our stable to make sure that we have something that uh, takes care of the interests of the employees and is a fiscally responsible plan. On a parallel track, hopefully tonight we can get some sense from the board. I don't know that we need a vote, but one of the things that will come to the fore almost immediately after we accept a plan administrator is what's your funding mechanism going to be? How do you want to fund the plan? As I think most of you know right now, we have a two-tiered system by contract. One, uh, as I read the contract, says that uh, uh, we have a category of employees who are entitled to a 6% match of gross base pay, uh, I said, rather a 6% contribution of their gross base pay, and another 3% match should they choose to make pre-tax contributions. The second tier is uh, for later employees who have come into the fold who uh, are allowed to contribute 5% of their gross base pay pre-tax and then the town would match up to that number. And I think uh, several months ago, we had this conversation about fairness and manageability. Uh, the second tier folks in aggregate, you're looking at 10% versus uh, 12% for the first tier. And in terms of manageability of a program from an administrative point of view, I think when we create this uh, administrative document, we should have a plan contribution that has one level of contribution and match for all employees. And to that extent, I believe my, my sense that the committee feels that the six and three component would be the best way to go in terms of fairness to participants who have had long-term history, uh, clarity, manageability. And it's a very, from my understanding of how these things work, it's a pretty middle of the road uh, contribution match formula. It's not rich. It's not, for want of a better word, cheap. And I believe Eric has put into the budget uh, sufficient funds to, uh, to reach this accommodation should that be the way we want to go. But I think we need, we need a sense of the meeting that six and three would be the way to go. And then uh, Bruce, as long as you're on board, we're going to have to go back and talk to the union because this is a change in the contract. Yeah, um, although it's a change in the contract that is uh, beneficial to uh, the, the other side of the contract. Um, Indeed. And and I and I would state that um, that's fine with me um, because we're doing what we think is right for. Uh, the group and to um, um, provide this benefit, uh, which is already stated, but to also, and, you know, I, I don't think it's any small thing 
what um, Ralph is mentioning in terms of manager being able to manage it. It's just simpler to manage it all on pretty much one level with, with a small group of employees like that. <clears throat> so, uh, Chris, did you have anything you wanted to add? No, nope, they got all the points. Sounds Great. Good. Thank you. Um, so, Eric, I think um, we could approve um, uh, putting out uh, this RFP. Would you like a vote to, to have to do that or just consensus of the board? Uh, consensus is fine by me. Yeah. Okay. My only question on the proposal uh, was I want to make sure we get responses. And is April 15th too tight of a date to get responses or or is this kind of a boiler boilerplate thing? We put it out to the right um, entities and we probably will get uh, a pretty fast response. Um, I, I expect we would get a pretty fast response. Um, most most of these um, financial advisors um, uh, do have established contacts. Um, it, it might be wise to give it an extra week. Um, I just want to make sure that we, well, I, I was hoping to get it back in time for the uh, April 20th select board meeting, but that might be overly optimistic. Um, so I'll think about that uh, and see if there's a better schedule. Uh, if we did it, uh, had it due, um, you know, end of April and, and uh, chose somebody in, in early May, um, that would um, that would work too, I think. I, I was just uh, hedging my bets, trying to, to, to make sure we had ample time to get this in place for, uh, you know, July 1, but that's an arbitrary deadline also, so. Um, if we can do this and do it, um, I think more time would be better to get better results. Okay, that's my only observation on it. Um, does anyone else want to speak to um, the the level of, of the contributions levels that that uh, Ralph brought up? As I said, I'm fine with that. Um, so that's just, but that's just a sense of one person. We don't all have to say anything in regards to it tonight if we don't want to, but. Um, that'll evolve, but anybody else? Okay, we'll move on. Um, and I want to thank uh, Ralph for uh, taking uh, the lead on this and Eric and Chris uh, for a, a great deal of, of help on that. It's um, uh, successful work by that subcommittee. Um, Next, we're going to consider the uh, a final draft of the FYI 2022 budget and warrant. So, uh, basically, what I'm expecting from you, Eric, is um, I don't know if you want to share um, any information document-wise online, or uh, just want to refer to the documents. Uh, mainly, what we're interested in is your um, the changes if you will, which you track very well on that change sheet. So I'm gonna let you speak to the budget and then I'll take us through the warrant approval process. So there'll be two different pieces to this. All right. Um, so the, the, I'm trying to think when the last time was that we revisited this. Uh, was it uh, the last, let's see, April, oh, oh. March? Yeah, really, the last time we visited it was at that public hearing. On the 18th, yeah, the public budget meeting. Um, so I will, um, I'll highlight changes since that time, um, which are a which are few. Um, uh, we just have three, basically. Uh, the select board did discuss the fact uh, that, um, that, that you would like to see some accommodation made uh, at, at my recommendation for um, uh, administrative costs such as the, the benefits um, and the um, uh, retirement uh, that we just talked about. Uh, so I did look at that and um, we moved everything that we thought was going to be possible. Um, so in, in short, we, we covered our potential liabilities in all of those areas and were then able to drop out that $25,000 additional that had been put in the contingency fund to buffer for those unknowns. Uh, and as we became more certain about what those costs would be, um, including you know, uh, costs for my contract, costs for the um, additional benefits, also the, you know, the final numbers on, um, uh, or the likely final numbers on, on any um, uh, bonuses, uh, 
that all came together. Uh, and the net result was another small reduction uh, in the mill rate once everything was balanced out. Uh, so the, the mill rate was set at 15.75. Uh, this does not include any change to the RSU budget. So that's very important. This shows an increase in the county budget, um, uh, increase in, in um, uh, municipal budget, offsetting revenues. Uh, and so we're, we're just a little bit better than we were when we had that discussion at the, uh, the joint meeting. Um, but we have better information, so that's always a good thing. Um, the, uh, the budget itself, uh, I, I don't think we really need to go into the whole uh, the, the spreadsheets or any of that unless the board has a specific question. I, I think what might make the most sense um, would, would be to just talk about the budget in the context of, of the warrant, which is the, the new piece, uh, at least for the public. The board got a draft copy of this probably uh, four or five days ago, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, and this is very similar to, to what you received as a draft. This is a full draft, including all of the ordinance uh, language that, that we expect to see or will see, um, and all of the budget information brought into those articles. So uh, there's uh, everything's been tied out and, and reviewed. And so this is a full, complete draft for the warrant. Bruce, you had made some um, uh, comments and some suggestions on a few items. Uh, I did talk with Chris Cheney about the school uh, and it looks likely their last day of classes is uh, three or four days before this event. So it seems quite likely, uh, but I have not received any final confirmation from him. So um, I'm gonna push on that this week so I don't think we'll need to come back to make a change, but uh, right now, I think we're going with the best option and probably a likely option as far as the venue goes. So um, I don't see why we couldn't approve this warrant tonight with the proviso that that location um, has an alternate location. Sure, yep. Okay, so we'll get into that in particular. Uh, before we get into the warrant, however, and thank you for that segue, are there any questions on the budget on any department? I know we've been through things in several presentations and just had the public hearing, but I do want, you know, there's always that point where you want to be able to make sure that someone who had a last question or a last need of clarification, and I will invite the public who is attending as well, uh, to go ahead and ask that. Okay, so seeing none, um, thank you for all the work on the budget. Thank you to the budget committee and they will be meeting, I guess, in a couple of days to also look at the warrant. Um, and what I will do on the town warrant is, um, let me ask you the, the question about the um, planning board first. Um, we, we're simply going to approve the warrant as presented um, for all items that we have in a general vote at the end, okay? Um, I'll divide it up uh, as we have in the past for select board recommendations, uh, which then the budget committee also sees uh, in their work and approval of the budget. Um, so, but my question for the plan uh, regarding the planning board is, do they have a separate public hearing coming up? Uh, they've actually already held it. Um, okay, it was held fine. three weeks ago, I think, on their piece. Bad for me to be mis misinformed, but I guess I am. Well, so they, it's, there's so, so many of so, them. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand that. Um, great. So then we can go ahead and, and, and do this. So, um, I did have a question. So I'm looking at the warrant, um, and right now I'm looking at uh, items, articles um, one through six, and this is just for questions and clarifications only. We're not, we don't make any recommendations on any of these. Um, but I wanted to ask about article four to fix those dates. Are those customary dates, or do we usually use the end of the month? Uh, those, those are. 
I think they are statutory, but I'll, I'll have to look at that. Um, the, these are the same. This is the same date format we've always used. I can't say exactly. That's all you had to tell me. Why? But yes, they're okay. Great. They're standard. Okay. So if the board is um, agreeable to this, uh, what I will do is take uh, the warrant articles in batches to make our recommendation. And what I'll do is just sort of give that a heading. It doesn't really necessarily mean everything falls under that heading because sometimes warrants aren't as logical as you think they are. But if there's one item, uh, one article you want me to pull out from that consideration because you wanna talk about it further, that's fine. Or we can talk about it as part of the batch as well. Um, but uh, it, it might be easier if you had one that's specific to pull it out uh, so we can just vote on the rest and then uh, take care of that one as well. And I'll try to retain some order. So I've titled, and again, these are loose titles. They're not going to be subtitled in the warrant or anything like that. So I'm looking at 7 through 13, and I've kind of called that, quote, unquote, um, operating categories. And so it's the Article 7 for administration, Article 8, which is for municipal maintenance, Article 9, that is for community services, Article 10, that is for recreation parks, activities, and open space, Article 11, which is for protection, which is the fire department ambulance service, those items. Um, Article 12, which is for cemetery materials and services, and 13, which is roads and, and um, drainage. So my first question is to the rest of the board, are there any of those articles you want to pull out because you want to discuss those um, separately? Okay, so seeing none, I would take a motion to carry to address these articles with a select board recommendation of yes. I'll make a motion to accept articles seven through 13 as just read with a select board recommendation of yes. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to um, put the select board recommendation as yes for articles seven through 13. Is there any discussion on those uh, warrant articles? Okay, great. We'll take a vote. Um, Ralph? Yes. Chris? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Bruce is a yes. Bruce? Okay. Yes. I just wanted to let you know, I looked up those two dates, and they are both Fridays just before the end of the month. I was just kind of, I guess I was wondering what the logic was to it. <laughs> Some people pay their bills at the end of the month, that kind of thing. So if we move on now to, um, I've just taken the next two because they are, uh, there's a lot of uh, material in these, which is a 14 and 15. Uh, and again, it's a loose title of capital. Um, so uh, the article 14 is to um, enter into agreements uh, providing for capital improvements. This is where uh, the treasurer's financial statement comes in on bonding. Uh, and, um, and then also the town uh, raising in Article 15 uh, the appropriate amounts for capital improvements. So these two seem related. So I would take a select board recommendation motion of, first of all, do you want to break these apart? No. Okay. I'll make a motion to accept Article 14 and 15, um, each with a select board recommendation of yes or ought to pass. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded for 14 and 15 to carry the select board recommendation of yes. Is there any discussion on these items? No. Bruce. Ralph, please. <laughs> going to sound like a broken record here. I'm going to support them, but I just want to be on the record as, as having reservations about the enhanced borrowing to, uh, to take the road, the road maintenance schedule uh, basically out of whack and uh, 
just simply because the money is is cheap at this point uh, to uh, to jack up our bonded indebtedness uh, and and we don't know exactly what the in, what the impact will be down the road when we when we have to fix these roads and there are more of them on the maintenance schedule as I pointed out than uh, than would have been if we had just followed the schedule. Thank you, and so noted. I, I guess I would say that um, in response, um, and this is not um, a, a counter to what you're saying, Ralph, I understand where you're coming from, is if we had a road committee that was um, irresponsibly acting over the years um, and, and not um, well supported, if you will, by uh, internal um, expertise, I'd probably have some of those same reservations, but I don't think that's the case. So um, we have that. Uh, is there any further discussion? Okay, I guess I just, I'd just like to add that we're only taking one road and bringing it forward one year. Um, so I'm, I'm not overly concerned because that's the nature. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We'll go ahead and proceed with the, with the vote. Ralph? Yes. Chris? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Bruce is also a yes. Um, articles 16 through 18, I've, uh, I've put together a solid waste and regional. Um, so uh, those are 16, 17, and 18, uh, 16 being the solid waste uh, budget, um, 17 being uh, the regional assessments for the Cobbesee Watershed and First Park, um, and then Article 18, which is uh, for the Kennebec County tax. I'll make a motion to approve Articles 16, 17, and 18 with a select board recommendation of yes. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to uh, assign um, a select board recommendation of yes to Articles 16, 17 and 18. Just turn it off. Is there any discussion? Okay, seeing none. Um, Ralph? Yes. Chris? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Dennis? Yes. And Bruce is also yes. This is moving along well. Um, and it's moving along well because you're all familiar with uh, the pieces of the budget and how they came together. So, um, 19 and 20 really are two kinds of separate items, but I've put them together uh, just for grouping purposes is debt service and tax relief. Um, so not Article 9, 19 is uh, debt service with um, the following uh, lines. This is where we continue paying uh, the fire truck bond, the, the Maranica Lake Dump bond, the municipal building bond, and the municipal building and paving bond. And Article 20, is uh, appropriating for local tax, the to local tax relief category. May I have a motion on these two articles? I'll make a motion to approve articles 19 and 20 with select board recommendation of yes. Second. It's been moved and seconded to assign a yes recommendation to articles 19 and 20. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, Ralph? Yes. Chris? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Dennis. Yes. Bruce is a yes. So article 21 through 28, um, I would call these support services derived from associations. Um, and so some of these associations are, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and actually read them. So this is 21 through 28, I'm not gonna read all, all of them, all, every word, but who they are. The Kennebec Behavioral Health Central Maine Agency on aging, which is the Cohen Senior Spectrum Center, uh, the Family Violence uh, Agency, uh, Marina Cook Lake and Torsi Pond Associations, um, the Sexual Assault Agency, the 30 Mile River Association, uh, the Redfield Union Meeting House, and um, also uh, taking um, snowmobile uh, registration funds and uh, signing them to the Redfield Blizzard Busters Snowmobile Club uh, for their trail uh, creation and maintenance. So that's articles 21 through 28. Is I'll make a motion. A... Oops, sorry. Hang on. I... 
Can I ask a question before we get started of Eric? Yep. Sure. Eric, is the Cobbacy watershed not included in these or does it come later and I've just overlooked it? Uh, um, I know they're in here someplace. Um, it's in a different category. Yeah, I'm trying to think where. Okay, I, I just wanted to make sure. services maybe? I'll, I'll have to look for that. But No worries. Uh, I, I, I scrolled through, didn't see it, and, and perhaps too quickly. So I just wanted to make sure that was in there. I, I, this, this sounds about where they should normally be, but I just, I'm sure it's in another spot. Article 17, Eric, um, bottom of page 3, top of page 4. Yeah, regional. There we go. Regional assessments. That's where they are. Right there with First Park, which is... Thank you. Sorry, uh, you know, Catherine is stuck up there. I apologize. It's okay. So I'll make a motion to approve articles or to move articles 21 through 28 with a select board recommendation of yes. Second. I moved and seconded to approve or to um, assign a select board recommendation of yes to articles 21 through 28. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, Ralph? Yes. Chris? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Bruce is a yes. I guess I'll just make one closing comment on 21 through 28 is um, these all are important services that end up getting delivered to the town in many respects. So I'm very appreciative of the people and volunteers who uh, do all that work. Bruce? In regards to this, yes. Can, I, not to not to jump on here, but I, I just want to I just want to mention one quick thing. Sometimes I get a chance to see other different towns uh, uh, select board meetings. I know it's a very exciting life I lead, uh, but it's because I, I, you know, I have a fascination with just number one, how awesome Bill Starrett is with our production, uh, but also just to see how different folks do different things. And sometimes it, it, the, the, the reason I say this is because the money that we are, we have just decided to put our support behind is as much a support of our community as building a sidewalk or redoing a road. And the services that these particular organizations, these nonprofits offer to our town, um, I, I can't say enough about. From, from, from snowmobiles uh, to, to crisis centers, it's just, it's, to me, it's just a no-brainer that we support these. And so I, I, maybe it's a chance for me to say uh, thank you to my colleagues, uh, but I just wanted to, to mention that and let it be a part of the record. Thank you very and, much. And Dennis, they're all done by uh, putting forth a letter asking um, the town to support this based on our population and the services that we know are, are being given to our residents. So it's really worthwhile. Yes, indeed. And these are remarks after the vote, right? I yeah. did take the vote, in other words. Yes. I want to make sure I don't lose track. Chris is always on the ball and stuff. Um, <laughs> So I'll move on to articles 29 through 35. Um, again, a loose title might be management of financial uh, factors. Um, but that's, I could be a bureaucrat, couldn't I? Um, so article 29 uh, is um, the unclassified uh, budget uh, category uh, for things like the Rebuild Enterprise Fund, uh, setting aside money for uh, reevaluation, overdraft, and abatements. Uh, 30 is uh, for general assistance. Uh, 31 is the expenditure of revenues um, that we receive uh, from uh, federal, state, and, and private grants uh, sources. Uh, 32 is uh, estimated revenues um, uh, that we would apply uh, to reduce the tax commitment. And there's a very long list of those. Um, Article 33 is the towns uh, appropriating uh, designated funds to reduce the tax commitment. Uh, Article 34 is uh, $25,000 uh, for purposes to meet contingencies. This is our contingency budget. Uh, and 35 is 
uh, a move from the unassigned fund balance to reduce the total tax commitment. So there's actually a lot of um, uh, effect, if you will, on real estate taxes to the benefit, if you will, uh, of uh, towns folk from this particular series of uh, items. So 29 through 35. I'll make a motion to um, accept articles 29 through 35 with a select board recommendation of yes. Second. It's been moved and seconded for 29 and 35 to carry the select board recommendations of yes. Um, is there any discussion? Ralph. Yes. Chris. Yes. Catherine. Yes. Dennis. Yes. And Bruce is a yes. So now we're at 36, so we're beyond now um, any um, items that need to carry select board recommendations. So the final articles of 31, 36, if you will, through 42. And um, this is just like at the beginning when we had one through six, I believe it was, to um, go ahead and just um, see if anybody had any items that they uh, wanted to discuss. And I'm probably going to make sure that we discuss Article 40 because I um, I penned that at the very last minute, and I want to make sure that the rest of the board is on on board with that. So, are there any questions on 36 through 42? Or thoughts, recommendations? Catherine, you've been involved with uh, 40 uh, in terms of um, making sure that we asked a question regarding uh, fiber. I tried to make it as simple and as direct as possible. Um, there could be federal money coming in or whatever. Uh, we already have the means and authorities to deal with that. So I tried not to encumber this with a lot of language about funding. Uh, our job was to see, I thought, in the question, um, just what the feeling was uh, of townspeople towards having um, uh, this considered. I think it's worded perfectly. Um, it just asks if they want us to continue moving in this direction. Um, it's very general. It doesn't have anything to do with funding. Um, those specifics and funding issues would come at a later date. Yeah, and it's, it, it, it's advisory. So it doesn't actually pass fail. It uh, advises us. And if it did not get a lot of vote um, for some reason, then it would behoove us to be better explainers of what we want to do uh, before we do put something to a vote that carries uh, financial interest. doesn't mean we necessarily stop, but it means we do, um, we have more homework than we thought, perhaps. Right. Uh, and if it has an overwhelming endorsement, then we know, gee, that's really a priority for people in their lives. And, um, uh, and we, we want to make sure to uh, honor that. Yes. And um, we're planning, probably Eric and I will end up being the authors, um, putting together a survey-ish questionnaire poll um, that will be available at the um, voting location, whether that's at the Kent's Hill School or in an alternate location, um, that people can pick up and turn in while they're there, or they can take it and send it back. We'll also post it online, and we're considering mailing it under separate cover for those who uh, request an absentee ballot uh, because it's not a vote, um, mm -hmm. but just we figured these are the people who would be voting or the most likely people who would be voting next year if we have a, another article at town meeting because these are the people coming to town meeting. Um, and so they could give us more information about the services they have and the services they want. Great, and so we do have some information we've collected. I'm assuming this is the exact same information. So we'd be able to differentiate, right? It would be different information. I mean, right. similar, so but yes. Right. It, so it's not somebody commenting twice, if you will, on no. the same information. It's augmenting what we have. Yes. Okay. And it's non-warrant, so we, we'll, we'll get off that now. Um, so now we're back to the total warrant. Um, and what I'd like to ask Eric, um, well, first of all, I would say uh, you should put Dennis Price as the vice chair on the last page. Seven. Oh, yeah. 
We oh, can yeah. fix that. So there's one fix for you. Um, where are we with legal review of this? Uh, complete. Okay, so 40 was okay with it? I mean, uh, the, the non-advisory, the advisory one, I mean? Yeah, that, that was actually uh, Kristen's uh, slightly modified language that was included in the warrant. Um, I okay. guess the, the one thing I, I'm still waiting on, um, I guess the, 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 the I've gotten uh, the, the, the language for the um, uh, treasurer's statement uh, is, is identical to the last time we put one of these on. Uh, and we did discuss it with our bond council, but she hasn't given me her final, final uh, answer on that, but um, that's about the only piece that is out. I wouldn't even call it outstanding. That's the only piece that's not certain in my view. Um, okay. But it's pretty um, darn well, certain. I guess what I'm trying to do is to approve the warrant tonight in a fashion that allows uh, flexibility on those couple of items so that um, we don't have to have a special select board meeting to Mm. reopen the warrant and and discuss it so you'll tell me if that's and it's always a possibility so for example it's always a possibility that um the budget committee uh votes uh no on every single item we just voted yes on i don't think that's going to happen but um so there's always a possibility we may need to revisit this but i don't think that's that's the case mm. so i'm going to make the motion that we um, accept the town meeting warrant uh, secret ballot as printed with the proviso that we authorize the town manager to um, change the location uh, on the language which says Kent's Hill Alphon Athletic Center with the address um, and, and give him the flexibility to do that to finalize the bond language and to um, put Mr. Price as vice chair. Um, so with those um, provisos, um, I'm going to go ahead and move the, uh, and all, carrying all the approvals or yeses recommendations that we made tonight. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, is there any discussion? Okay, seeing none. Ralph? Yes. Chris? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Bruce is a yes. So um, thank you very much. Um, we've been doing this as the, in these groupings for the last few years. And I, I don't know, Catherine, you're our historian. Maybe they used to do it every single one, one at a time. I don't know. Um, I think I went to some board meetings where it did, but I'm not even sure if that was this town. Uh, but uh, it I seems think we work. stopped that about uh, 15 years ago, maybe okay. 12. Good. Yeah, it was long. <laughs> well, it works. Um, so we're done with that. And I asked at the beginning if we could add to the agenda uh, just a brief discussion about moving to live meetings just to see where pe what people's thinking were was in that. Um, I'm very comfortable with uh, continuing Zoom if we need to for another couple of meetings or so. Um, you know, whatever happens, uh, we, we need to follow the right advice on that, I think. Um, but I did want to just get a sense of the board. I'm a little frustrated that, um, particularly on public hearings, we've not been able to get interaction with citizens to degree. I think that is helpful. I think it's been mentioned before. There's a lot of trust in this board. It's built up over the years. And so that's part of a factor of that occurring, perhaps. Um, maybe I'm overthinking it. Uh, but in any case, um, you know, uh, I, I, think it, I think it's just a good point in time to have a quick uh, conversation about that. Probably the next meeting would be Zoom, but I don't know. What do you think? Um, I would like to, to suggest maybe something that we've done before, which is, to meet in person, but perhaps um, with a, a limited audience uh, inclusion. Um, I, I, either way, I'm, I'm, you know, I acquiesce to the board, but I, I feel comfortable with that. Um, you know, a little bit more now, uh, but I understand that might not be the case with everyone. So, um, but I, I just wanted to start the conversation. 
I'm all for us meeting in person again. I prefer that. I mean, I love the not having to travel, but um, I much prefer that we have our public meetings in public. Um, and let's keep in mind that as of May 20, well, as of last Friday, we can now be at 50% capacity uh -huh. inside, right? Yep. And then 75% at the end of May on May 24th. That is correct. Um, so I, I like Dennis's suggestion of, um, Eric, if you can give us a, a room limit with social distancing, um, yep. then we can post a number of public that may attend um, so that people know in advance that they can be there. Okay. Other thoughts? I'm all for going in person. Well, Ralph, you're traveling to down to the town office anyhow. Would you <laughs> like some faces in the same room with you? I I do favor in person just as long as we are in compliance with whatever the state guidelines are at the particular point in time where we decide to go back to that. Yeah. I think the meetings are much more productive when they're in person. And as has been noted, uh, the opportunity for public participation is greatly enhanced. Yeah. I, 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 would, I would just add to that and say I hope that even though we acknowledge that the uh, in-person meetings have a certain effectiveness, I think that some folks have also benefited from the Zoom meetings. Um, so so I, I know that we, we do a lot of broadcasting, et cetera, et cetera, um, but, but I would hope that we would be able to continue having Zoom links for our meetings. You can and we will. Thank you, sir. Great. I think Zoom um, is here to stay. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> the, That's right. Um, so it, if it pleasures the rest of the board, I would just ask that you just let Dennis and I and Eric in our agenda setting make those decisions based on guidance from meeting to meeting. Um, my default would be to try to consider live meetings first uh, and move in that direction. Maybe not the next meeting, but we'll see. Um, I'd really like to get that May public hearing to be a live meeting. Yes, um, indeed. That would even entertain looking at a larger space uh, at one of the schools uh, yes. if if if, uh, if that was appropriate. So, you know, I I, I don't think we're going to have a huge uptick in participation necessarily at that meeting, uh, but we do need to start thinking in in in, in that direction. So, is that okay with everybody? Yeah, our next meeting is until the 20th of April, so that's... Yeah, exactly, so we're, we're quite yeah. a ways out. So yeah, I think we're I, set. I think, I think, I think that's, that's a great time to resume. Thumbs up, everybody, thumbs up. There we go. Yeah. Okay, great, great. There we go. Um, well, thank you. You know, the I mean, the other thing I would just mention on Zoom, we are following guidance. There is state law that talks about participation and so forth. I don't believe we, if we meet... Once the state of emergency has ended, I'm, I think we can have a hybrid meeting during the state of emergency. In other words, a board member can attend. We'll check this out. Mm -hmm. But I believe a board member can attend remotely. But I believe once we're all live and there isn't a state of emergency anymore, you have to attend in order to vote. I don't think uh, you're that, that's right, able, Bruce. able to do that. So just a thought. So but the, thank you. The audience could still be on Zoom. I wouldn't Absolutely. have a problem with that at all. Yeah. yeah. Um, right. I think I think we have another tool for people to reach us. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So I take a motion to adjourn. I'd like to move to adjourn, please. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adjourn. Uh, Ralph. Yes. Chris. Yes. Catherine. Yes. Dennis. Yes. Now I'll vote yes as well. Thank you, everybody. Um, hey. Have a great thank night. Thank you, Kristen, for taking notes. Uh, thank you, Bill, for the broadcast. Good night, everybody. Thank you, Eric. Thank you.